Hey guys, so I wanted to do something new today. Um, every time a new expansion comes out or a DLC or whatever, you know, people are always changing up their builds. Um, when they do that, you see people who've never done dungeons, you know, running new dungeons. And as, you know, someone who does pug a lot, um, this is a nightmare. You have people who have no clue what they're doing. Um, so I decided I'd start doing some build guides, or not build guides, but um, dungeon guides. Um, these will be for normal dungeons, though many of the hard mode mechanics will remain the same. Um, I'm doing currently uh, Frost Vault because I'm trying to get, um, I don't know how to pronounce it right, to Zogden gear. Um, and it's been a ma massive pain just because people don't know what they're doing. So yeah, I figured I'd make a little guide you know, showing you what to do and how to get through this dungeon without making it a pain for everybody else. So I will include timestamps um, down in the description, just so you can you know skip ahead to bosses if you want. Most of the mobs in this dungeon are just trash mobs. Um, there's no real mechanics or anything to it. It's pretty simple. For this first boss, there's a couple things you want to look out for. The first one is he will randomly uppercut somebody and then start pounding on them on the ground. And you cannot do anything about this. Somebody else in your party needs to interrupt the boss and that will stop it. Otherwise, there's a good chance you will die. Um, the other thing is it will spawn a bunch of minions. If you're doing this on normal, a few AoE should just drop those mobs, no problem. The other couple things there are is he will randomly throw a boulder at people. Um, this really doesn't hurt too much, but it will knock you down. And the other thing is, it will just sit there and do like a ground pound AoE and just do damage to people. Uh, overall, this boss isn't too tough. Just keep an eye out for when it starts pinning somebody to the ground and make sure you interrupt his attack. Once you've beaten the boss, just go ahead and head through the door and then turn to the right and then there'll be another door. Go through that one. Um, this will then lead you to uh, kind of a loop, um, which will have a couple bosses in it. There's no way we're breaking through that. Hmm. Maybe we won't have to. That construct likely hasn't moved for thousands of years. I've seen far worse. We'll need to salvage some parts, though. It'll need a new soul gem for what. But... What's that thing? Crossbow! Acquisition from the Clockwork City. Perfect for finding things in hard to reach. Oh. This next boss, in my opinion, is probably one of the more difficult ones in this dungeon. Not because it's hard, but because people just don't seem to pay attention. Um, the first thing he will do is he will tether you. So you'll be tethered to someone else. You need to move away from the other person when this happens. Um, I see this as a tank all the time. Um, I'll get tethered and I'll move away, but because I have aggro, um, you know, the boss follows and then the person who's tethered will follow also and then kill us both. So if you see something that says you're tethered, look where that line goes to, because it'll tether to somebody else and move away from them. Um, that's pretty much the big thing here. The next part is you will get some red circles around you. Um, once you see those red circles are like little flame things, um, just don't try to stack on somebody else when you see those, because then you're doing double damage to yourself. Uh, there's no way to actually get rid of it. It's just you have to kind of survive through it. And the third thing is you're going to have these ice um, circles that are floating around. 
Now, it's kind of weird. I've noticed as a tank, they don't follow me, it seems like. But as a DPS, I've noticed they do seem to follow me around. Just try to avoid them if you can. And lastly, what will happen is he will go to the middle of the room and start doing a ice circle, which will slowly extend itself out. Um, just go away from it. Do not stand in the middle and try to fight the boss. You are, once again, just wasting the healer's resources by doing this. Just range on the boss while it does this. And once it's done, just get back in there and kill it. Come across. I came here to study goblins, not slaughter them. If you want to run on ahead and make a peace offering, be our guest. Let's just take the soul gem and go. Hold your horses. Pariah also said we need to find an equilibrium <laughs> spear. <laughs> For this next part, you're going to start by going through a hallway with some lasers, which will kind of teach you the mechanics of the boss. Um, you can run through them, though. It doesn't really matter too much. So what's going to happen is, if you're the tank, first off, you want to get this guy into the middle of the room. Um, at about 1.3 million, I believe it is, he's going to drop himself down and put a shield around him. Once he puts that shield around him, you'll see a um, laser start coming across the room. You'll see two points on it, obviously, one from the source and one from where it's ending. Get on the opposite side of the source and use the boss's shield to block it. Um, then go back to DPSing on the boss again. Um, at 1.3, it'll once again do it, but this time it'll do it with two lasers. Um, so you just got to be a little more careful. Same process. Get on the opposite side of the source of the laser. Um, and then the boss will pop back up and he will do a spin. Um, if you are not the tank, don't stand in this. Once again, you are just wasting the healer's resources, you know, just standing in it. Um, I can just sit here and block through it because I have the stamina to do it. Um, now just get to the point where you're DPSing. You'll have some trash mobs you can kill if you want. Um, it's not a bad idea. And then at about, at about 650k, 700k, it'll do the shield again. This time just go ahead and um, dodge the, what's it called, lasers again. It'll have three this time. Um, once all three are down, it's going to do the same process of spinning. Um, just get out of the way if you're a DPS. Um, keep it in the middle if you're a tank. Um, and then, you know, once we're down, I believe it's around 300k or 400k, it'll do it again where it drops down and protects itself. And then this time we will have four lasers that you need to use the shield of the boss to block on the op and, you know, going on the opposite side of where the source of the laser is. Um, from there, just finish the boss off, and that is it. Once you've beaten that boss, you'll then exit out of the area, um, walk across the um, to the other side, and you'll see a Khajiit um, down, kneeled down on the ground in front of a door. That'll be the door that you need to go to. Estimating the local goblin population. The articulators are completely seized up. I can't get it moving again, but I might not have to. Meaning? If I can channel enough energy through the tonal emitter on its own, it should reduce the work. Thank <laughs> you. 
So for this next boss, there's a couple of mechanics you want to watch out for. Um, so first thing when you walk in, you're going to notice this ice statue pops up next to the boss. You can completely ignore that. Don't even worry about it. It's not going to bother you too much. Um, you want to focus on the um, Riza Bone Shell, whatever his name is there, the, the humanoid character. So he's going to do a few things. Um, first thing, though, you want to know when you walk in, um, you'll see there's a big circle by the door that pops up of ice. Um, so when, you, when the tank goes in, go in with him. If you're standing too close to that doorway and you're not quick enough, that will hit you and kill you. Um, the next thing that's going to happen is he's going to stick a staff up in the air. Once he does that, you're going to want to interrupt it. doesn't matter if you're the tank, DPS, whatever. Because if you don't, eventually the rooms are going to become overrun um, with these big ice circles and they will wipe you out. Um, I could be wrong about that part. From what I've seen, though, this is what seems to happen. Um, the next part is you're going to see something that's saying he's chilling the air. When he does this, he's going to do an unblockable attack that's going to freeze everyone in the room and do like a red circle around you. So when you see this, you're going to want to separate from everybody else. Because otherwise, you're going to start stacking red circles and do multiple damage to yourself. Um, the only other thing I can really think of on this boss um, is he will like teleport from place to place. It's not really a big deal. Um, just follow him when he does. Otherwise, yeah, those are all the mechanics for this boss. anything in all this mess. We have your conveyors. It only took murdering every goblin in this place. Enough, Landal. You've had your chance. Once you've beaten that boss, just continue along the path until it exits you back out the way you came in. And then to the left, you'll see a big machine blast the door open. Go ahead and go through that door to the left where this one blasted open, and then you will be going up to the final boss. For the final boss, there's going to be three different phases here. Um, the first phase is just a bunch of mobs. You're going to want to go ahead and just kill them off. Um, be careful when the Dwarven Centurion pulls back and charges a heavy attack. If you don't block that or dodge, they can knock you off the ledge and kill you. It's not a big deal since it's not technically a boss fight. You can just revive, but it is kind of funny watching it happen. Um, you'll also sometimes see them shoot like an electric bolt. And that will also knock you around too and potentially knock you off the ledge. Once you've killed all the enemies, you're going to see four green circles pop up around the edges. Go ahead and go to one of them and interact with it. This will transport you into a mechanical um, skeever. Um, you're going to go up to this blue electrical thing and use your number one um, button to charge it up. Hit it repeatedly so your ultimate is charged. You're then going to follow the electric path you see on the ground. This will take you to um, like a, what's it called, a conveyor. Once you're at the conveyor, use your ultimate, discharge it. That will kill the conveyor. You need to knock out four of these. If everyone knows what they're doing, everyone just does one and that is it. Once you have done that, all four, um, it will then transport you back up to the boss.
That's it. Something's happening. Get out of there, quick! Once you've disabled all four conveyors, you're gonna be transported back up to the top again. Um, this is when the boss will actually show up. So first thing he's gonna do is smash his hand down in a red circle. If you see that red circle move, it will one-shot you. I have been one-shotted on my tank a couple of times because I just wasn't paying attention. Um, if you're the tank, aggro both the hands and turn the boss away. Um, it will move when you go to attack the hands, so just kind of you know, make sure you aggro it and stay on one side and let the DPS do the damage on the other side. Once you've knocked down the health on the hands, it will spawn a Dwarven Centurion. Go ahead and kill those. Once both of them have been taken out, go ahead and attack the center, the actual boss itself. It will then be vulnerable until it's at about 500k. Once you have the boss down to about 500k, you will then get the green circles popping up around the edges again. This time though is you only have 10 seconds to interact with it. If you do not do it within 10 seconds, it will kill you. Once you've gone ahead and jumped into those circles again, you're gonna go back down below, do the same thing you did before. Use your one key or X if you're using a controller to charge up your discharge. And then use your ultimate to, um, what's it called, to discharge on the conveyor. Now this one's a little bit different. You're gonna see some fire spots pop up um, and you'll see some blades that are spinning. So there's a couple extra commands you can use here. Um, you have your charge command um, where you run faster, which I believe would be number three. For me, it's B because I'm using a controller. And um, left bumper or four um, to do um, a heal. Now, once you're done, you're gonna go back up to fight the boss again. Same process as before. This time, it only has about 500K though. Um, you're gonna wanna, if you're the tank, aggro, stay on one side so it doesn't spin around and hit everybody. Instead, you're taking pretty much all the damage. Um, yeah, knock it down from that point. Kill both the um, Centurions when they pop up. Um, honestly, you don't even have to kill the Centurions at this point. You can just DPS on the boss if you want, especially if this is on normal, because they're probably not gonna kill you if you have a good healer. Um, and yeah, that's it. You've killed the boss, you've completed the dungeon, and hopefully you've gotten that gear that you're looking for. Um, so that's pretty much it for this dungeon. Thanks for watching. Um, I wanna try to do this about once a month, I think. Put up a dungeon guide. I'll probably do these on normal because I think most people are just farming gear and they don't want to deal with, you know, these harder dungeons when they're just farming gear, um, unless it's like a headpiece or something like that. So, yeah, that was it. Let me know in the comments what you go, dungeon you guys want me to do next time. And thanks again for watching, and I'll see you later.